This video is uh, going to be about how you can make a, uh, a receptacle that's controlled by a thermostat that you commonly have in our shelters but we don't really use anymore ever since the T-Land temperature probes came along. Uh, so if you rip one of these out, you can actually repurpose it to make a thermostat controlled receptacle. And where I find this can be handy is using little space heaters inside of uh, like DCI cabinets or battery cabinets that can't keep up in the winter to, to prevent a low temperature alarm. Um, so instead of kind of relying on the thermostat that's built into the, uh, the heater unit where you can't really know what temperature you're setting it to turn off at, you can actually dial in the temperature of the receptacle and that'll give you a more precise kind of um, control of the, uh, the heater. The advantage of this is that sometimes what happens is if, if you set the heater too high, um, it's going to warm the cabinet up to a point where the, uh, the HVAC unit turns on and then the heater and the HVAC unit are going to be fighting each other even though it's winter outside and you don't need the HVAC unit to turn on. And the other advantage is that it kind of adds redundancy to the circuit. So um, even if this happened to fail, you would still have the, um, the thermostat control of the heater itself as kind of a, a redundancy because um, I know people get a little bit wary about leaving space heaters within cabinets because you know, typically you don't want to leave it unsupervised, but this offers two thermostats. Um, so if one fails, at least you know the other one's going to cut off the heater in the event that something starts getting too hot inside there. So it's pretty basic what you need. Uh, first, you're going to have to rip out uh, one of your thermostats inside your, your shelter. Um, then you're just going to need your standard receptacle, uh, extension cord end, a uh, piece of extension cord or cab tire as they call it. Um, the device box to put the, the receptacle in, receptacle cover. Uh, then you're going to need uh, three gland connectors, uh, one for each end of the uh, device box and one for um, the bottom of the, um, the thermostat. Gland connectors, they call them gland connectors because if you open them up, there's actually a, a gland inside here that when you tighten down the top, it kind of grips onto the cable and that's what stops it from pulling in and out. Uh, the funny thing about gland connectors is, is typically when you go to an electrical supplier and buy other connectors, they always come with the lock nut provided. It's, it's uh, considered one piece. You buy the connector and it comes with the lock nut. But for some reason when you buy gland connectors, the lock nuts are always um, a second part that you actually have to buy separately. And I can remember as an apprentice, you'd, you'd order, you know, a box of gland connectors from the supplier go pick it up in the morning, get to your job site and say, oh man, I forgot to get the lock nuts. And then you're kind of um, out of luck and got to go back and get them. So we'll start by uh, opening up the thermostat. Um, if you look at the data plate inside, most of them still have this. You can see it's actually uh, at 120 volts. This, this thermostat's rated for 16 amps. So since your typical household receptacle is rated for 15 amps, it really means that anything you can plug into this receptacle, this thermostat's going to be able to handle the switching on and off of uh, that, that load. In this case, it's going to be the heater. Um, in here, it also tells you what the, the uh, terminals uh, work out to be. Most of them are color-coded. They have a yellow, uh, blue, and red. And if you read the label, red is your common, and blue opens on high, and yellow opens on low. So in this case, we want to use blue because we want the circuit to open on a high temperature. So what we're going to do is take a little piece of extension cord, I've got about maybe 16 inches here, and first we're going to wire it up into the thermostat end so that we can get that portion all out of the way, and then we'll work on the receptacle end after. Uh, so, you know, give yourself maybe uh, four or five inches of cable to work with. You just got to strip the sheath back. And there you go. And then we'll get this uh, inner material out of the way because we don't need that, we just need the cable conductors. So then once you get your, your gland connector installed on the on the thermostat, you can just feed your, your cables up in there. It can be a little bit tricky, sometimes uh, it's actually easier uh, to feed the cable into the gland connector first um, and then kind of put install the gland connector with cable at the same time instead of trying to install a gland connector and then push the cable up in there after. So you always want to leave about, you know, maybe uh, a few millimeters of insulation. That's kind of just so that uh, there's no chafing on the actual conductor. The chafing would occur on, so on the, uh, the outer sheath uh, for some reason, if there was ever any reason that it, there'd be chafing occurring. So now you can install your cables. Throw your lock nut on. 
get that tightened down. And one way you can tighten these, because um, you don't want to just go finger tight, you take a slot driver, and then those lock nuts have little kind of ridges around the uh, exterior of it. So then you just take your slot driver, give it a couple bangs on those to tighten down the lock nut. And you can see I can't even turn that anymore, so that's perfect. So now what we're going to do is first things first is we'll terminate the ground. There's a little ground screw kind of on the uh, the bottom corner here that we can terminate to. So make sure you strip yourself off enough that you can kind of wrap it around the screw and hook it. And just put that on there. Slot driver again, and you can tighten down that screw. Okay, good. Ground's done, so now we can move on. Uh, I'm going to make the black the common in this uh, circuit. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. You could use the white. Um, we're actually going to be taping the white red, because white typically means it's a neutral, but in this case it's not a neutral, it's a switched hot. So I'm going to use black as my unswitched hot and red as my switched hot. So just terminate it on your first terminal. And as I mentioned before, we're going to use the blue terminal, which is opens on high. And first I'm just going to throw a band of uh, red tape onto the white, just to designate it that it's not neutral. Strip yourself off some, some bare wire, and we can terminate that around the terminal screw also. Okay, with that all terminated, now we can uh, throw the cover on. Whoops. Tighten that down, and we're done with the thermostat portion. So on the other end, you're going to want to strip yourself off about the same amount, probably around 5 inches or so. Take off the inner material. Slide this in through your gland connector into your receptacle box. Oh, Got to make sure you put the, the cap on first. Okay, now the other half of the cable going to be your your plug uh, and so for this I'm probably going to give myself about um, maybe four feet of slack just so that when it's in the cabinet uh, you can kind of reach the uh, receptacle wherever it is inside the cabinet in fact you know what I'm going to use this entire cable just for the sake of it it's about six feet long just because you never know where that receptacle is going to be located inside the like say the DCI cabinet or the battery cabinet so same thing, this thing I'm going to actually strip off maybe a little bit more, maybe uh, 7 to 8 inches. Take off that inner material. Get my cap on. Slide that inside. So now to get the ground terminal done to ground the box, what I'm going to do is 
there's a bit of a trick to these sometimes. What you can do is you can either put a separate wire uh, to it, or you can actually strip a little piece of this back and then put that under the screw. And then you'll have the rest of it insulated, which will go to, say, your receptacle or your, um, your wire nut. So the way you do this is I'm actually going to take it out just so I can show you. Is you want to be fairly close to where the, uh, the insulation is. And I've always had if you, the, the trick, if you, if you kind of cut it in two spots, maybe uh, about three quarters of an inch apart. And then what you do is you can kind of run your knife between the two cut marks. Just strip off that one piece of insulation. Kind of peel it back. Just needs a little bit more. There we go. So now what you've got is uh, you've got your cable and then a little part of the stripped insulation. So you can put your cable back in. And with that piece that you've stripped back, you can just as it enters into the box, you can tuck it right under the screw, the the, uh, the grounding screw of the box itself, right as it comes in. And then this way, you have your box grounded, and then you see